Howdy folks, I hope you all had a good weekend. Well, right now it's Sunday night, I've just had my dinner. I'm enjoying a quiet drink and doing an episode of Mingles with Jingles ready for Monday. And I have to admit, I'm I'm feeling kind of lost for things to talk about in this episode of Mingles with Jingles. It's been a fairly quiet week. I mean, there's plenty to look forward to. We've got Tank Fest coming up in just a couple of weeks. We've got the War and Peace show coming up next month as well. Largest collection of military vehicles in the world. And it goes on for an entire week. So that's going to be fun. Also coming up next month, London Film and Comic Con. Is it sad that I'm actually getting more excited about London Film and Comic Con than the War and Peace show and Tank Fest? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> They've got one hell of a guest list this year, though. Um, Jewel State, who played Kaylee in Firefly. I've never met any of the cast. Well, actually, that's not true, of course. Um, I have actually met one of the cast of Firefly. I met Alan Tudjuk, who played the Serenity's pilot, Wash, at last year's London Film and Comic Con. Um, this time around, it's Jewel State, who played Kaylee, the Serenity's engineer. They've also got most of the main cast of Battlestar Galactica turning up. Mary McDonnell, who played President Roslin. Edward James Olmos, who played Admiral Adama. Uh, you've got Jamie Bamber, who played Apollo. Katie Sackhoff, who played Starbuck. You've got James Callis, who played uh, Gaius Baltar. They've got Grace Park, who's currently starring in Hawaii Five-0, unless it's been cancelled by now, but also played Boomer in Battlestar Galactica. And then I plan on rounding off my Aliens collection, because I've already met Jeanette Goldstein, who played... Vasquez, the smart gunner from Aliens at Brighton Film and Comic Con about two years ago. But at London Film and Comic Con this time around, we also have William Hope, who played Lieutenant Gorman, and Lance Henriksen, who, amongst many, many other things, also played the android Bishop in Aliens. It's going to be interesting to see which of them are the most approachable. Although, well, you have to bear in mind that there are probably going to be thousands of people queuing up to see the likes of Edward James Olmos, who played Admiral Adama. And it's not just that he played Admiral Adama in Battlestar Galactica, he also played Gaff in Blade Runner alongside, you know, the original Blade Runner back in the 80s, alongside Harrison Ford. And he's got one hell of an acting resume. I mean, aside from Battlestar Galactica and Blade Runner, he's appeared in numerous TV shows and movies, he's been in The West Wing, he's been in Narcos. His time's probably going to be limited. He's probably not going to have the time to spare for a chat or conversation with everybody who's turning up to say hello to him. You do tend to find that of the big names, the headline guest stars that appear at these conventions, which is entirely understandable. I mean, there are so many people lining up to see them that the staff tend to keep you moving. Um, completely understandable, of course. For example, Christopher Eccleston is appearing at London Film and Comic Con this year. Who the hell's Christopher Eccleston? Well, if you're a Doctor Who fan, this is actually a fairly big deal because he played Doctor Who when it was brought back in 2005 for one season and he has never been to a science fiction convention before and he's appearing at London Film and Comic Con for the first time ever one day only on the Sunday and there are people actually coming from as far afield as the USA just to get their autograph and picture taken with Christopher Eccleston at this year's London Film and Comic Con so your chances of anything other than hello, how are you, handshake, turn, face the camera, smile, next please, with Christopher Eccleston are fairly slim indeed. Um, you do tend to find that some of the lesser known stars are entirely willing to spend a surprising amount of time talking to you. Uh, Jeanette Goldstein, for example, who, as I mentioned, I met like two years ago at uh, Brighton Film and Comic Con. She didn't just play... Private Vasquez in Aliens, the smart gunner. I mean, she's been in almost every James Cameron movie ever made. James Cameron, the director of the original Terminator, Terminator 2, Avatar, Titanic. He, he tends to like to work with the same actors. He's got a bunch of actors that will appear. They might not have huge roles, but they're going to appear in just about every movie that he has ever made. Jeanette Goldstein's one of them. Lance Henriksen is one of them. And... Bill Paxton, who sadly died last year, he played uh, Private Hudson in Aliens, is also one of them. And when I was at Brighton, um, there weren't a huge amount of people queuing up to see Jeanette Goldstein, which is surprising considering the body of work that she's done. Then again, it was quite late in the day and most of the queues had died down, so I actually got to stand and chat to her 
to her, with her, uh, for a good 20 minutes, just talking about some of the lesser known movies um, that she's worked on. Movies like Near Dark, a sort of cowboy vampire. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, it's an amazing movie. Starring Jeanette Goldstein, Lance Henriksen, and Bill Paxton, directed by Gail Ann Hurd, um, who produced Aliens and was married, but is now divorced, from James Cameron. Uh, and just talking about the fun that they had when they were making that movie in particular. And she was delighted that, you know, I actually recognised her from Near Dark rather than Aliens or Terminator 3. Um, and she's a wonderful, wonderful person to talk to. Also, Leah Cairns, a Canadian actress who had a recurring role in Battlestar Galactica as Racetrack, one of the Raptor pilots. And one of my favourite characters in the show, even though she, well, she was only in every third episode. But, well, we basically had Jeanette Goldstein, who I've always wanted to meet, and was a lovely person, sitting right next to Leah Cairns from Battlestar Galactica, sitting right next to Alice Krieg, who played the Borg Queen in Star Trek First Contact. So, I mean, none of these three actresses are major stars of stage or screen, but they've had fairly significant roles in all kinds of huge science fiction and horror TV shows and movies, and they've rubbed shoulders with the rich and famous. And because they weren't, you know, headline stars, there were not that many people queuing up to see them. It was kind of late in the day, and we were basically able to monopolise their attention for the best part of an hour and get all kinds of juicy information and backstage gossip <laughs> about what it was like to work on some of these massive science fiction and horror TV shows and movies. And they were all three of them just such delightful people to talk to. You never ever got the sense that they weren't enjoying the conversation. All three of them were just delightful people to talk to. Now you could make the argument that that's completely understandable. I mean, nobody goes into the movies unless they want to be the centre of attention. And certainly in the case of Alice Krieg and Jeanette Goldstein, it's been a fair while since they appeared in anything major. So yeah, of course, they were just delighted to be the centre of attention once again. But I don't think that's entirely fair, at least not in the cases of these three ladies. Um, I've been to other comic, film and movie conventions and met people like, for example, Danny John Jules, who played the cat in Red Dwarf, and I loved his character in Red Dwarf. And he's had a couple of other roles. He appeared in Blade 2, he was in Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, but he's, I mean, he's had a couple of minor TV and movie roles since Red Dwarf, but Red Dwarf is basically what he's known for. And the one time I did get to meet Danny John Jules, he was an utter arsehole. Which is ironic, considering that he basically makes his living now going around these conventions, having his picture taken and selling his autograph. Because he turned up late, made no apologies, stank of alcohol, and was just rude and indifferent all the way throughout the entire autograph signing process. He clearly wanted to be anywhere other than at the convention. And you know, that's absolutely fine. I mean, I appreciate it's probably not how most of these actors and actresses see their career developing. I mean, I'm sure the majority of people that get into the movies and TV have dreams and ambitions of award ceremonies and red carpets, but for the overwhelming majority, the reality is that they're going to end up their careers attending these science fiction conventions, selling their autograph for $10 a pop because they appeared as third stormtrooper from the left in the 15th scene of the seventh Star Wars movie. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if, if there are enough people out there who still remember your roles with sufficient fondness to go to the trouble of travelling to these conventions just to say hello to you, have a picture taken, and buy your autograph, and if enough of them are prepared to do this, that you can actually make a living, supplement your income by attending these conventions, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But, you know, at least try to act. Remember, you're an actor. Act as if you give a shit. You know, I realise I'm probably coming across as a little bit entitled here, and that's, that's a fair accusation to make, because if you break it down to its basics, what you're actually conducting, when you turn up to one of these conventions to meet one of your favourite movie or TV stars, what's actually happening here is a financial transaction. You hand over a certain amount of money, and that entitles you to either an autograph and or a photograph, and no more than that. 
Anything that you take away from the experience above and beyond that is basically a bonus. You've gotten it for free and you should probably be grateful. And that's definitely one way of looking at it. But how happy would you lot be if I took that attitude when I turn up to meet people at Tiger Day and Tank Fest at the Tank Museum? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm not even charging anybody for the privilege, you know, nobody has to hand over any money to get my autograph or say hello to me. Um, you know, I put this down to when I met, well, aside from basic human decency, when I met Armin Shimmerman at Destination Star Trek two years ago, Armin Shimmerman played Quark in Deep Space Nine and Principal Snyder in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And he's been in all kinds of things. I've seen him popping up in various different TV shows. He's no Harrison Ford, but he's a busy actor. He's constantly working. He does a lot of voice work as well. He actually did the voice of Andrew Ryan in Bioshock Infinite. Um, and despite the fact that there actually was quite a considerable queue of people lining up to speak to him, he had time for every single person that made it to the top of the queue. There's a minder sitting next to these people at these conventions that are basically trying to rush people along and get the queue moving. But Armin Shimmerman wasn't having any of it. <laughs> he was, no, no, it's okay. You know, these, these people have travelled a long way and they're paying money to see me. They're going to get their money's worth. Admittedly, that does kind of work both ways. I mean, it's bad news for the people at the back of the queue. Because <laughs> they're going to be queuing for some time. But when you make it to the front of the queue, he made it worth your time. He really, really did. He was just such a delightful person to talk to. A really nice guy. So I had these two extreme examples of what it's like to meet people at these science fiction, film and TV conventions. You've got Danny John Jules at one end of the scale, who just clearly didn't want to be there. And you, got no you took nothing away from it other than the sense that you were wasting his time. And then you've got Armin Shimmerman at the other end of the scale, who's a busy working actor. I mean, he's appeared in seven things this year alone, and we're only six months into 2018. You know, he's still working, but made you feel welcome. And those were my two role models <laughs> to choose from when it came to, you know, how am I going to act when I go to a meet and greet at Tankfest or Tiger Day? Hopefully, it should be fairly obvious which of the two I've chosen to emulate. It's not quite the same. I mean, I'm not charging anybody for the privilege of standing in line for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, when you say it like that out loud, it really does sound ridiculous. But I'm not charging anybody for the privilege. But I mean, why the hell should I? It's not like I, I'm Harrison Ford or anything. But whether money's changed hands or not is completely irrelevant. If, if, you're, if you're making yourself available like this you have a responsibility to make it worth the while of the people who are standing in line to say hello to you. Now, I admit, naturally, I am a bad-tempered old no, but Armin Shimmerman's got 20 years on me, he's 68 years old, and if he can be warm, agreeable and approachable for an entire day at one of these film and comic conventions, I'm sure I can do it for a couple of hours at Tankfest. Hopefully, you lot will agree. I guess we'll find out in a few weeks. It has been a pretty quiet week, actually. I mean, you'd probably guess by the fact that I've spent the last 13 minutes talking about Armin Shimmerman and Jeanette Goldstein. <laughs> it's just been one of those weeks when there hasn't been a whole lot happen. Um, I've basically spent the entire week building stuff in Conan Exiles, which was the focus of this week's Casual Saturday video. Um, I suppose the major news is the 2018 World Cup in Russia. But I just don't care. I, I, I really, really don't. It's easy to not care when you're from England. I mean, we haven't won anything since 1966. And we won't stop going on about it. Two World Wars and one World Cup. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it all before. Um, it's quite ironic, actually. Because it's been so long since England have actually won anything. It's, it's bizarre how quickly people suddenly start taking up a sport once England becomes successful at it. I can't remember which... Olympic Games it was. I think it was the Australian Olympic Games. God knows when that was. Um, but as usual, England hadn't won a thing until the hockey. And not even the women's hockey. Men's hockey. I didn't even realise men's hockey was a sport. But England won gold at, again, I'm pretty sure it was the Australian Olympics, at men's hockey. And suddenly it was astonishing how many people <laughs> suddenly became lifelong supporters of men's hockey. 
Oh, God. You know, that's the good thing about no longer being in the Navy, because every time the World Cup came around, or the European Football Championships, there was nothing else on the television down the mess deck on board the ship. For weeks, just, that was it. It was either football or TV shows where people were talking about the football. Nothing other than football was on the television. Well, other things were on the television, but you didn't get to watch them because the football was on. So that's the, probably the best thing about not being in the Navy anymore. It means I actually get to not have to watch the football every time the European Championship or the World Cup comes around. Because I, I just don't care. I really don't. I was under the impression that Rita didn't care either. Certainly, that's what she told me. <laughs> Turns out I've been lied to. The World Cup kicked off last week on Thursday. And the only reason I knew the World Cup had kicked off last week on Thursday, well, aside from the sponsored World of Tanks Blitz uh, football championship video that appeared on Thursday, was all the swearing and cheering and cursing coming from Rita's room in Portuguese last Thursday. It turned out Portugal were playing Spain. And um, how can I put this? <laughs> For somebody who claims to not be interested in football, Rita certainly seemed like she was interested if all of the very loud Portuguese I could hear coming from her room was anything to judge by. Portugal actually scored in the fourth minute from a penalty. I knew this because of all the Portuguese cheering that was coming from the next room. So I went through to find out what the hell was going on. I was like, oh right, the match is on. It's Portugal versus Spain, okay. Barely four minutes later, apparently Spain equalised. Now, I wasn't watching the match, but I knew this had happened. <laughs> from all of the um, very, very violent Portuguese swearing that was coming from the other room. Now, let it not be said <laughs> that I would ever skip the opportunity to take the piss. So upon learning that Spain had equalised, I went through into Rita's room and started singing you're not singing, you're not singing, you're not singing anymore, you're not singing anymore. Let's just say it nearly cost me my life. <laughs> For somebody who claimed to not be interested in football, she seemed to get very excited. <laughs> the thing you have to understand about Rita is she's small but fierce. <laughs> She's like a very angry hobbit. <laughs> and I had to run from that room for fear of having my nipples pulled off. <laughs> That's what she does. That's what she does. She doesn't fight fair. She goes straight for the nipples. <laughs> and I've no idea what she was calling me because I don't really speak Portuguese, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't very nice. <laughs> It was a bit of a roller coaster ride. Well, for, her, for me, it was hilarious. <laughs> so the scores went up and down and up and down. Luckily, Portugal didn't lose. I mean, they didn't win either. The final score was three goals each. Uh, Portugal managed to clinch an equaliser in the dying minutes of the match. How do you know this, Jingles? <laughs> I heard it. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd, because she'd have just, it would have been impossible to live with her if Portugal had lost to Spain. This week is going to prove to be quite interesting as well, because Portugal are playing Morocco. And you might be thinking, huh, what's the deal there? Well, it's fairly easy to understand that there's a bit of a history between Portugal and Spain. They've been traditional enemies for hundreds and hundreds of years. But the grudge against Morocco actually goes back to the Crusades. <laughs> it's unbelievable how long the Portuguese will hold the grudge. You see, back in the Middle Ages, Morocco, or the Moors who lived in Morocco, managed to invade and colonise most of the Iberian Peninsula. And Portugal hasn't forgotten it. <laughs> so, Portugal are playing Morocco on Wednesday. So that's what I've got to look forward to this week. I may not have to watch the World Cup, but I still pretty much have to listen to it. <laughs> Even if the commentary is all in Portuguese. Not that I ever understood what I was watching in the first place, so it doesn't really make much difference. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I've got to look forward to this week, and that's pretty much what happened in the previous week. Not a huge amount, but amusing nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Mingles with Jingles. And I do hope to meet a whole bunch of you at Tankfest coming up at the end of the month. In the meantime, take care, and I'll catch you next time.